Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India When we look at the social shaping of technology, we have already discussed the political control of technological systems in the works of or through the works of Langdon Wiener, do artifacts of politics. Now, let us discuss technology as knowledge through the works of Edwin T. Latin Jr. In then monumental history of technology, Charles Singer, Homyard and Air Hall define technology as how things are commonly done or made or what things are done. I mean, how is technology defined by European historians? We are trying to look at European historians. I mean, technology when we look at the 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 the, the way the, the center stage uh, was taken by European historians of science as well as American historians of science. Later on, American tradition came, but first European historians of science and technology. Then how is technology defined by European historians of science and technology? To give you the examples from uh, Charles Singer, E. J. Homeyard and A. R. Hall, <coughs> uh, for them technology is nothing but how, uh, how things are commonly done or made and what things are done or made, how and what, how things are commonly done or made and what things are commonly done or made. Then they, it implies that technology is considered a technique and the practitioner of technology that is the technologist is regarded as a technician. In this usage, the traditional definition of technology, then what, what should be the traditional definition of technology in this context? Okay. I mean, uh, okay, before, before getting into traditional definition, let, let us see how others also define. I mean, Thomas, uh, White, they also, uh, uh, I mean, Maurice Thomas, um, uh, white, they di dis discussed technology. I mean, the history of technology is the history of technique and the things produced by techniques, by those techniques. Technology I is may be considered an economic determinant of social change rather than scientific le leadership in intellectual development. Okay. That is the traditional definition. This, this, then what is the traditional definition by European historians of science and technology? That they treat the, these European historians of science and technology, they treat technology as I mean they, they treat uh, technology as technique and the technologist as technician in such usage of the traditional definition of technology as systematic knowledge of the industrial arts becomes quite obsolete, it becomes quite meaningless too. Okay. I mean they characterize the usual definition in their phrasing, systematic discourse about the useful arts as a modern artificial formation, since 
as they explain it was not until the 19th century that technology acquired a scientific content and came ultimately to be regarded as almost synonymous with applied science. That is what we discussed earlier that science was considered basic science of technology applied science. Okay. The, the, the denial of, of a thought component to technology is the consequence of adopting a theory of the relationships between theory of the relationships uh, of science and technology. Then what is that? That I mean this, this, this theory holds that technology is not a science from the 19th century technology uh, acquired a scientific content and regarded as applied science. That this, that this theory holds that scientists generate new knowledge which technologists then apply. Okay. There are two assumptions which are critical here. One, I mean the first is that the technological knowledge is essentially identical with natural philosophy. We have already discussed natural philosophy, I mean till the 19th century uh, it was considered science was regarded as natural philosophy. Whoever in the 19th century coined the term science and it was science replaced the term natural philosophy. Okay. I mean there are two assumptions which are critical here. The first one, the first assumption is that technological knowledge is essentially identical with natural philosophy and the second assumption is that this knowledge, the technological knowledge has been produced by scientists since 1800. I mean such such absurdity we will we'll see that that logical deduction from these two assumptions from these two premises leads to an absurdity. That is that prior to, to 1800 technology involved no knowledge at all, it cannot be that is what uh, Edu, uh, Edwin T. Latin Jr. attempts to pose such question. Okay. The, the French counterpart of a history of technology edited by uh, edited by Maurice Domus, again a European historian of science arrives at similarly similar historiographic results by a different route. Here too the history of technology is reduced to the history of techniques and the things produced by techniques, but in this case as Lynn White has pointed out, the emphasis is on economic determinants of social change rather, rather than scientific leadership in intellectual development. Okay. That is what we have discussed here, okay. that, that how Domus and White they said that history of technology is history of the technique and the things produced by those techniques and technology is an economic determinant of social change rather than scientific leadership uh, in intellectual development. Okay. But, in, but in either case the net result is the same. In the same in the, in the, in the name of a theory technology is made subordinate to other types of social and intellectual activity and virtually denied an independent role on of its own. In particular both theories of history deny technology a significant component of thought, significant component of the form of knowledge. Okay. Such, such assumptions have, di differ, di I, I have various consequences, it in, they may include denial of a thought component to technology, the adoption of a theory in the relationships of science and technology, in the name of theory technology is made subordinate to other types of social and intellectual activity denial of an independent role of its own, scientists generate new knowledge which technologists then apply. Historians of technology, then, then how, how if, if we say this is how European historians of science defined technology, then how was technology perceived by uh, American historians of technology. 
to give you the examples of Crunchberg, Purcell, Ferguson, Hunt, uh, Hunter, they use work, the term work as an organizing principle. This connotes many things. It may broaden the scope of the history of technology, at least three things which we have spelt out in five points. Okay. It broadens the scope of the history of technology, makes technology an independent historical force. It includes thought as a part of technology, the role of ideas in technology and the flow of knowledge or information within a te specific technological social system. Okay. I mean these American historians of technology namely Kranzberg uh, uh, or Purcell uh, in their technology in western civilization, the way they use work as an organizing principle. This does at least three things. One, it broadens the scope of the history of technology. Secondly, it makes technology an independent historical force and thirdly, it includes thought as a part of technology at least by implication. Okay. Indeed, the emphasis on thought is characteristic of many American writers on the history of technology. Lynn White, Carl Condit, and uh, Ritty, a mixture of both European and American traditions. I mean, what they did. Among others, they have written on the role of ideas in technology. Okay. The fourth point, the role of ideas in technology. Okay. And Ferguson, Derek B. J. Solar Price, and A. Hunter uh, Dupree have discussed the flow of knowledge or information within a specific technological social system. Many other examples could be cited. These works, I mean, too many, uh, I mean, uh, the, the such diverse, however, diverse the individual approaches, these works represent an important development whose historiographic implications deserve attention, deserve study. Despite significant countervailing tendencies raised from American tradition, the emphasis on technique has had a distorting effect on the writing of the history of technology in America as elsewhere. It has produced a certain defensiveness and confusion. As Robert uh, Multhoff has pointed out, we have no word for the improver of technology. Okay? Comparable to the scientist, the man who advances science and this theory has the effect of projecting into the history of the uh, uh, pecking order of science, reducing the history of technology to baser questions of things and processes. This theory narrows the scope of the history of technology. It is not simply thought that is neglected. Okay? It also subordinated the relationship, I mean this such subordinated relationship narrows the scope of the history of technology itself. Okay. The technologist's thinking is intimately associated with the needs and values of a specific community or communities at large. By confining the history of technology to technique and things, we also deny to our discipline a rich dimension of its social history. For example, in the article on the medieval atheism in a history of technology, Thompson in noting that skilled workers were organized into guilds and trained by apprenticeship comments that such matters are the business of the historians not of technology but of economics and therefore cannot be restricted here okay cannot be uh, described here and when we when we talk about technology with knowledge since antiquity from the very beginning okay far from constituting a modern artificial formation, the linking of technology with knowledge is very old. Okay. Aristotle, how Aristotle defined art? Aristotle defined art like this, that now since architecture is an art and is essentially a reasoned state of capacity to make and there is neither any art that is not such a state nor any such state that is not an art, 
art is identical with a state of capacity to make involving a true course of reasoning. Okay? The, the reference to architecture makes it clear that our term technology is included in Aristotle's term art. Okay? Equally clear is Aristotle's association of art with knowledge. It is important, I mean as a matter of fact, if you look at, okay, indeed Aristotle's reasoned state of capacity is a quality of a human being. To Aristotle, it might be manifested in things, but he would not have confused it with the things it produced. Aristotle was not an isolated exception. Okay? Let, us, let us see how uh, uh, Beuzoan uh, uh, has pointed out. Beuzoan uh, suggested that medieval schoolmen associate, I mean medieval schools associated technology with knowledge and they included technology, medieval schools included technology in their classifications of the science or science age. Okay? Hugh of St. Victor for example, held that mechanics is a form of knowledge which must embrace the methods of production of all things. The linkage of technology with knowledge uh, has a long history in English as a brief purview of the sections on science and art in the Oxford English Dictionary will testify. It is hard to avoid the conclusion that the separation of knowledge and technology is both recent and artificial. It is also self contradictory. Okay? How it is self contradictory? This is obviously true in an etymological sense, but it is also true logically. Technique means detailed procedures and skill and their application. Detail technology refers to detailed procedures and skill and their application. But complex procedures that these detailed procedures can only come into being okay, through knowledge. Skill is the ability to use one's knowledge effectively. A common synonym for technology is know-how, but how can there be know-how without knowledge? This is what Leighton Jr. poses, this, this question was posed by Leighton Jr. That the common synonym for, te for technology is know-how, but how can there be know-how without knowledge? It might be worth mentioning uh, or it may, might be worth examining the origins of the notion that technology does not include knowledge. The current model of science technology relations has its roots uh, in a semi official ideology of science uh, that is I mean I mean uh, Nathan uh, 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 Rheingold has traced the origins of this ideology in America to the writings of Joseph Henry in the early 19th century, but it has become widely accepted okay, uh, through the writings of modern spokespersons for science. In America, whenever Bose, uh, uh, he wrote the endless frontier, he wrote uh, endless horizons, uh, okay. uh, he was the first to talk about uh, linear model of innovation in science and technology um, in, a, in a more sophisticated manner. Okay. Uh, in America, Vannevar Bush was an important source. Okay. What he said? He, he, for according to Vannevar Bush, basic science leads to new knowledge, it provides scientific capital, it creates the fund from which the practical applications of knowledge must be drawn. Okay. New products and new processes do not appear full grown. <coughs> they are founded on new principles and new conceptions, which in turn are painstakingly developed by research in the purest realms of science. A, a recent British uh, governmental publication okay, expressing the same theory maintains that the justification for basic research is that this constitutes the count of all new knowledge without which 
the opportunities for or further technical progress must eventually become exhausted. Okay. Clearly, if basic science is the source of all, uh, if if basic science is the source of all uh, new technical knowledge, then technology itself produces no new knowledge, and the technologist's role becomes that of applying knowledge generated elsewhere. And this is precisely the theory we find in uh, Singer, um, uh, Homsweg and Hall's history of technology. Okay. Indeed, it was through, through the work of Hall and certain other historians of science that this theory was introduced into the writing of the history of technology. It is possible that some historians of science were led to their view of science technology relations in a reaction against the Marxist attempt to reduce science to the level of a superstructure for materialist forces. Hall in particular appears to have been influenced by the scholar and craftsman controversy that is a Marxian interpretation uh, I mean uh, uh, interpretation made by Zilzel in 1942 which was attacked by Hall in 1959 uh, that uh, Zilzel attempted to provide a Marxian interpretation of the scientific revolution. Uh, he held Zilzel, Zilzel held that the scientist was a hybrid combining the craftsman's uh, empiricism and the scholar's systematic thought. The scientific revolution took place when the social barrier between the two components of the scientific method broke down and the methods of the superior craftsmen were adopted by academically trained scholars and therein we witness the, the birth of real science, real science was born. Okay. One of the most effective of those who attacked Gilgel's theory was uh, Hall. In a series of classic uh, studies, he refuted the notion that the experimental uh, methods of science were derivable by virtually direct imitation from the trial and error, haphazard and fortuitous progress of the crafts and scientific laws were not simply a projection and enlargement of the rules used by craftsmen. But, but I mean Hall's model of science and science technology relationship, I mean technology influenced science through instrumentation by presenting problems such as in chemistry, science influenced technology by its theory, scientific theory was in was of slight use to technology prior to the 19th century. Therefore, engineering could not advance until the mid 19th century that was Hall's argument that was Hall's model of science, te science technology relationship. But Hall's work was not simply negative, he constructed a sophisticated model of science technology relationships. In a sense, it is a standard one now in use. Technology influenced science through instrumentation and by um, presenting problems in less developed sciences like chemistry in the 50s, in the, in the 1950s, 1960s facts and experimental procedures were borrowed also. Science also influenced technology by its theory, but Hall's research was not, uh, 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 but, 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 but his research uh, I mean convinced Hall that scientific theory was of slight use to technology prior to the 19th century. Okay. Thus Hall suggested that engineering could not advance in the 17th century because of the limits of age existing materials and this limitation has been overcome subsequently that uh, that Hall maintained Hall maintained that is uh, that is chiefly through the use of I mean the limit is such limitation of not having or the absence of existing material in the 17th century okay, has been overcome subsequently uh, chiefly through the use of concrete uh, and metals that is by chemical knowledge, but the advance of engineering uh, was delayed until the middle of the 19th century, since until then there was no useful body of chemical theory from which useful consequences uh, could be drawn to benefit metallurgy. It is important to note that while Hall and several other spokespersons 
for the current model of science technology relations are the followers of uh, Alexander uh, Kohl. Kohl, then what, is, what, what, what are Kohl's views on interaction of science and technology? Okay. Kohl had a uh, different view of science technology relations. I mean, Kohl did not reduce technology to techniques. On the contrary, he insisted that technology is a system of thought based on common sense an independent system different from scientific thought. I mean, Kohl did not reduce technology to techniques number one, rather on the contrary Kohl insisted that technology is a system of thought based on common sense that is an independent system different from scientific thought. Okay? An independent system also different from science, system of thought. Okay? He considered, quite considered it a system of thinking based on common sense. He held that uh, the, the technical thought of common sense okay, does not depend on scientific thought of which it can nevertheless observe the elements incorporating them into common sense. Indeed, Coe went further to him the history of technology is inseparably to uh, inseparably linked to intellectual history. Coe believed that I mean history of technology cannot be separated from intellectual history as such. That is why technology is knowledge, technology is a form of knowledge. Coe believed that science obviously influenced technology, but not directly rather in subtle and indirect ways. The elements I mean when, when Coy believed that science indeed influenced technology, okay, but, but the elements observed were not necessarily the results of science its laws and findings. Rather Coy emphasized uh, uh, a rather subtle indirect influence. In a specific case, the idea of a world governed by precise mathematical laws Okay. In a specific case, the idea of a world governed by precise mathematical laws was transmitted to technology through Galileo's and Huygens' conversion uh, of the mechanical clock into an instrument of precision. The idea that the universe is governed by precise mathematical laws, it should be noted was not a scientific result, but one of its presuppositions. Further, Coe assumed that the influence was indirect involving something like a, a translation of the idea from one medium to the other, one medium to another. To Coe, the result was not simply uh, the grafting of a scientific result onto uh, technology, but rather a transformation of the very structure of technology's own system of thought. Okay. Then, <coughs> In Coet's, Coet's theory of the interaction of science and technology is subtle and powerful. What, what uh, Leighton Jr. thought that it is essentially correct in so far as it treats science and technology as having separate bodies of thought which different from one another in significant ways. It is easy to sympathize with Coet's characterization of technological thought as common sense the writings of technologists can sometimes appear to be nothing more than common sense, especially if they are read through spectacles provided by philosophy of science or, or, or you may say philosophy or even science. Okay? Then the, 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 the question is, is it possible that one of the ways, I mean one of, one of the difficulties okay, is that uh, that technological thought differs from that of philosophy, including natural philosophy that is science, in an even more radical way than Coer had imagined. Artists, for example, technologists, philosophers, scientists on common sense, I mean artists for example, think quite differently from philosophers. In specific cases, it can be shown that technologists display a plastic 
geometrical and to some extent non verbal mode of thought that has more in common with that of artists than that of philosophers. Aristotle for one supposed that there was an essential unity in the work of artists and technologists that both were sharply distinguished from science. Aristotle maintained that all art is concerned with coming into being that is with contriving and considering how something may come into being which is capable of either being or not being and whose origin is in the maker and not in the thing made. Okay. This is on this is in contrast uh, to science. I mean it is important that all art for, for according to Aristotle all art is concerned with coming into being that is with contriving and considering how something may come into being which is capable of either being or not being and whose origin is in the maker and not in the thing made. And this is in contrast to science which in Aristotle terms dealt with uh, things that existed uh, uh, of necessity and by nature. Okay. Then the we, we, we need not assume I mean we need not assume here that technological thought is a single uh, uh, monolithic uh, uh, whole or entity uh, or that it can be uniquely characterized uh, in any single formula. Rather there is a common denominator to technology that is design to be more precise or ability to design or reason state of capacity to make. We need I mean the ability to design common denominator to technology when we talk about I mean we need not assume that technological thought is a single monolithic formula or, or a monolithic uh, whole okay, or that it can be uniquely characterized in any single formula. Yet it does have characteristics which differentiate it from science. In this regard it is interesting to note that American engineers in uh, in the 18th century in the no, not 18th century, but 19th century American engineers in the 19th century and early part of the 20th century have assumed that there was a common denominator to technology and they have identified this this as design or to be more precise the ability to design. Okay. There are several points about this characterization which de deserve a detailed discussion emphasis. First the engineers who used to uh, who, who used this also assumed that engineering comprised all technology okay. uh, and secondly this idea is used okay. uh, this idea is used uh, not only in after dinner speeches which are not necessarily to be taken seriously, but also in framing membership criteria for the professional grades of engineering societies a matter I mean a matter which engineers take with deadly seriousness. The professional engineer is usually considered the creative practitioner the real engineer. In the definition of such a person the ability to design okay, has been almost universally acknowledged as the crucial test though in practice only the most professionally oriented societies have actually adopted it. It is interesting to note that ability to design and 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 reason state of capacity to make are very similar both in form as well as in substance. Design is clearly distinct from philosophy including natural philosophy. It is uh, as both Aristotle and modern engineers have held uh, an attribute of a human being which may be expressed in an object, but, uh, but which is not identical with the object itself. At the outset design is an adaptation of means to some preconceived end. The first stages the, the, the first stages of design involve a conception in a person's mind which by degrees is translated into a detailed plan or design, but it is only in the last stages in drafting the blueprints that design can be reduced to a mere technique. 
and it is still later that design is manifested in tools and uh, things made. Design involves a structure or pattern, a particular combination of details or component parts and it is precisely the gestural or pattern that is uh, of the essence for the design. We may view technology as a spectrum, technology may be viewed as a spectrum with ideas at one end and techniques and things at the other end with design as a middle term. Okay? I mean technology may be viewed as a spectrum with ideas at one end, okay? techniques and things at the other with design as a middle term. Okay? Technology, te technological ideas must be translated into designs. These in turn must be implemented by techniques and tools to produce things. And the current model of science technology relations looks at only one, day, one end of the spectrum. It would be an equal distortion to see technology solely as thought. Both aspects are required for a balanced view. Examining technology from the point of view of design is hardly novel. It has already uh, proven useful uh, to historians of art, architecture and building. Karl Condit's works uh, uh, are a case in point. Okay? Uh, it, it is possible that historians of technology okay, may find still wider uses for this concept. Design may be of assistance in understanding the nature of invention, for designs differ with respect to novelty. If neither the design nor the separate parts are new, we have no ordinary, we have, we have rather ordinary engineering. The designer simply adapts known means to a given end. She or he may build a truss bridge of familiar design and materials, the sole novelty being in adapting those to these to the particular case. But even here quite a bit of original thinking may be required. As for example, in the case of truss breeze of unusual size or exceptional conditions of loading, one or more of the components may be new. This could involve anything from minor design improvements to the translation of an anything from minor, uh, I mean, uh, uh, for, uh, I mean, this could involve anything from minor design improvements to the translation of an established design into a new medium. Okay, as in, as in adapting the wooden uh, 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 truss bridge to iron construction of major innovation, or we might have a uh, new design with familiar components. In this case, we speak of an invention. The, that what is that invention that, that the invention of the truss as a bridge for might be an example. There are also new types of designs using new component components. This too would be called an invention or perhaps innovation, though it can represent a higher order of novelty as for example, in the case of Edison's uh, uh, electric bulb, I mean Edison's incandescent uh, lighting system. Okay. Uh, uh, Thomas Alva Edison's uh, uh, invention of electric bulb. Okay, that's also a part of social shaping of technology. We can discuss these things later. Now, the the designs for the final products of technology do not exist in isolation. Okay, they are intimately associated with production and management. Okay, which also require design. For example, the innovations of Whitney and Ford. Okay. Uh, were less in the final products, whether uh, muskets or automobiles, than in the design of systems of production and, and tooling. Conversely, Leonardo's notebooks appear to contain designs which the technology of his age could not produce. Okay? But perhaps a more fundamental way of looking at designs would be in terms of uh, the types of system to which they refer. Okay. I mean technology has relied on uh, rational principles, I mean will, will be uh, and theoretical constructs 
since at least classical antiquity okay will will i mean as as uh, uh, i mean uh, if we look at a complex whole capable of functioning as a working system okay okay uh, of some sort such systems are not confined to a particular medium or nor are they mechanically similar okay whatever the type of design the use of used by engineers of ability to design as a test of technological ability or creativity succeeds because so much technological work requires combining elements into a working whole in order to reach some preconceived end american engineers do not define technology solely in terms of design okay they put great emphasis on the uh, engineer as some kind of practical scientist okay as leton argue leton junior argues that these descriptions are not thought to be mutually exclusive they they conceive uh, of the engineer as a practical scientist who is able to design certainly certainly technology has relied on rational principles rational norms okay and theoretical constructs uh, since at least classical antiquity in more recent times these rational elements these rational principles these rational norms values have been transformed into systematic bodies of thought that is they have become sciences in some sense okay and and it is these theoretical parts of technology that present the uh, the biggest problem for models of the interaction of science and technology zilzel who provided a marxist interpretation of the relations uh, uh, relationship between science and technology okay thought technological rules were embryonic laws of nature okay hall who attacked jilgel who attacked the marxist interpretation of the relations of science and technology okay uh, hall denied this and asserted that early technological rules were governed by rule of thumb or rules of three or by um, aesthetic canons they had no analytic justification and to hall of course modern rules were simply applied science okay uh okay and and such 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 i mean i mean hall's theory of uh, science technology relations has received much attention okay uh, in in recent years the idea that science generates the knowledge employed by technologists has not proven sufficient science may indeed influence technology in this way but this does not provide adequate explanation this does not provide an adequate explanation of most technological change that is the limitation of hall's theory of science technology relation that that the idea that science generates the knowledge employed by technologists has not been uh, uh, has not proven sufficient okay it may be uh, uh, may people may think that no this is necessary but actually science may indeed influence technology uh, in diff in this way or maybe different way but this does not provide an adequate explanation now uh, of most technological change for example for example in the in the specific case of metallurgy okay uh, uh, stanley sir stanley smith and uh, uh, theodore uh, what time have shown that knowledge was generated by uh, technologists with only uh, slight indebtedness to natural philosophy until very recently now now let us come back to coer's position okay here too coer's position is subtler than uh, that of his followers and it may uh, provide a useful uh, point of departure for understanding the rational elements of technology coer uh, held that uh, technology generated uh, or rather technology constituted a system of thought essentially different from that of science technology generated its own independent rules which came ultimately to constitute a body of technological theory and this body of knowledge which was then transformed in a fundamental way under the influence of science but the result was not simply science applied to technology but something different which coer called 
technology that is not simply science applied to technology, but something different the earlier craft rules and modern engineering science form a continuum that that uh, uh, unfortunately, the term technology uh, has lost its original meaning in English and we must use uh, uh, circumlocutions like technological science or engineering science, but whatever the terms the implication is that the earlier craft rules and modern engineering science have however, different form a continuum. We might restate the matter, we might restate the matter by noting that the laws of science refer to the, the, the nature and the rules to, to nature and the rules of technology refer to human atifying. I mean what is what what is the co what is Coet's position here that is a useful point of departure for understanding the rational elements of technology. They include these these rational elements include the laws of science refer to nature and the rules of technology which refer to human atifi. The function of technological rules is to provide a rational basis for design not to enable human to understand the universe. The difference is not just one of ideas, but of values knowing and doing reflect fundamentally different goals of the communities of science and technology. We have already discussed this how science was considered an act of knowing, technology was considered an act of doing, but this, this, this such distinction is not rigid, but porous. And uh, the thought that embodies the values of technology will uh, relate to active and purposive adaptation of means to some human end uh, that is it will relate to design. Though Coet's theory is superior to the uh, uh, usual model of science technology relations both suffer from some of the same defects both are asymmetric that. Coet's law, I mean Coet saw uh, the difference between science and technology in platonic terms as the distinction between two Greek philosophical ideas that is episteme that is knowledge and techni that is art. Okay. From this point of view, it would be absurd to think of knowledge flowing from technology to science. Okay. That episteme is knowledge epistemology we have already discussed the theory body of knowledge or theory of knowledge okay that episteme is knowledge and techni is art okay and from this point of view it would be meaningless to think of knowledge flowing from technology to science okay but if one sees the difference in social terms as values held by different communities the result is symmetric uh, I mean the result is a symmetric model of science technology interaction. There is no contradiction involved in assuming that knowledge might flow from a community that values doing to one that values knowing. In this way technology and science might influence each other on all levels that there is no contradiction involved in assuming that. that uh, knowledge might flow from a uh, from a community that values doing to one that values knowing. Okay. We just cannot say that science is superior to technology or technology is superior to science. Technology and science might influence each other at all levels. Coet's approach leads to a static model. The, the I mean I mean in this view technology and science uh, 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 as they might influence each other uh, on all levels. Similarly, um, uh, Coet's approach leads to a static model uh, uh, that is the platonic ideas of knowledge and art do not change over time, but the values held by a community do evolve in time. Uh, even if, even if, if we, if we uh, look at it even if uh, uh, scientists and technologists continue to value knowing and doing S knowing means science and doing means technology okay 
even if scientists and technologists continue to value knowing and doing the precise significance of these values will change because of the changing context provided by other values and ideas. And such changes are interesting and important subjects of historical inquiry, but they have been scarcely touched by uh, uh, historians of technology. Okay. If, if the uh, 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 to, to conclude that technology is knowledge that the current model of science technology relations looks at only one end of the spectrum. It would be an equal distortion to see technology solely as thought both aspects are needed a balanced view needed for a balanced view. Uh, the ideas of technologists cannot be understood in isolation they must be seen in the context of a community of technologists and of the relations of this community to other social, uh, economic, political, cultural, uh, 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 institutional, legal, ethical and ideological agencies. If the current, if the, if the treatment of technology as thought is an important tendency in contemporary historiography, then where is it leading? An emphasis on knowledge puts the stress on, the, on ideas of uh, intellectuals. This is essentially the historiographic approach of Collingwood and also of Coe. It should therefore, have the effect of integrating the history of technology more closely to other branches of intellectual and social history. The emphasis on knowledge further serves to direct attention to innovations uh, in technology as against technos technicians. This has two sorts of implications. Uh, on the one hand, it leads towards an intellectual history of technology, and on the other hand, innovation suggests considerable uh, consideration of the role of technology in social change. In either case, I mean, first one leads to, uh, in the first case, it leads to the, the intellectual history of technology, and this in the second instance, uh, innovation suggests considerable consideration of the role of technology in social change. In either case, the ideas of technologists cannot be understood in isolation. They must be seen in the context of a community of technologists and of the relations of this community to other social agencies. Paradoxically, a concern for knowledge serves to um, emphasize the importance of social history for the, for the history of technology. Okay. Then, what have we discussed till now? I mean, uh, in this in this lecture on technology as knowledge, that that very quickly we'll see. We started with how technology has been conceived by European historians, then American historians. Okay, I mean historians of technology. Okay, and. The, the hybrid, I mean the, the hybrid version of America, European American historians of science and technology. Okay. Um, and then we discussed uh, the relationships of science and technology. Uh, then technology with uh, the, the linking of technology with knowledge is the way it is very old. I mean we tried to look at examine how to link technology, I mean the way technology was linked with knowledge since classical antiquity. Then examine, we try to examine the origins of the notion that technology does not include knowledge on the, on the one hand and on the other, okay, uh, uh, how it can also include knowledge. We also discussed Hall's model of science technology relationship in contradistinction with Coet's view on the interaction between science and technology. Then, uh, while looking at classical antiquity, I mean, while looking at the relations, so relationship of science and technology, since classical antiquity, we try to look at Aristotle, uh, Aristotelian uh, version of the relationship of science and technology, artists, technologists, uh, philosophers, scientists, views on common sense, okay. the ability to design, common, that is a common denominator to technology. Uh, from the ability to design, we, we have discussed 
what are the inherent limitations within Hall's theory of science technology relationships, what are the uh, what are the problems with Coer's position that is a useful point of departure for understanding the rational elements of technology. Okay. Then what are the limitations of Coer's theory of science technology relationships uh, and thereby what we come to know that the current model of science technology relations looks at only one end of the spectrum, it would be an equal distortion to see technology solely as thought or to discard technology as thought, both aspects are needed um, for a balanced view. The ideas of technologists cannot be understood in isolation, they must be seen in the context of a community of technologists, uh, they must be seen in the context uh, of, uh, uh, of our economy, our culture, our polity and of the relations of this community to other social uh, uh, agencies. A concern for knowledge okay, serves to emphasize the importance of social history for the history of technology. In the, in the lectures to follow, we are going to discuss further the social shaping of technology before we go into the, the, the later version, uh, later to, towards the later parts of the course. Okay. Thank you.